Ladies and gentlemen, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video called Never Resign, showcasing a viewer game where the noble act of surrendering prior to official defeat uh, was avoided by one of the players and ultimately resulted in something wonderful occurring. And today, we are continuing along the same path. Of course, resigning uh, is honorable uh, to, to end the game prior due to the fact that you trust your opponent will conclude it uh, in, in, in the way that they are supposed to. But below a certain rating, it is completely unnecessary and you should never do it. And that is where we are today. The setting, the chess.com pool, a 15-minute game, Gotham student, not official student, but protege, I'm watching the YouTube videos, playing a very aggressive individual, rated 879 from Australia. The game begins with the move D4, G6, and this is a, a, an attempt at a modern defense, but white gets really wild. I mean, I, I'm talking like flank pawn push against the G pawn. This is very scary stuff. My golden, my, my golden rule, you get hit with H4, don't let him have any fun, you go H5. That's it. All their fun is gone. But in this game, black plays d5. And for a completely inexplicable reason, even though you've just played h4, clearly h5 is the way to go, white plays g4. Perhaps white has actually no plan whatsoever and just wants to move every pawn two squares. I don't know. Very deceiving strategy here. Two, one pawn down the middle, two pawns on the side. Now, here, black should, of course, play bishop takes g4. That is the best move. It is a one mover. The long diagonal is a very tricky thing. But uh, clearly, uh, white responds with aggression, f3. So the goal was not to move every pawn two squares, but rather it was a trap. This was all preparation, even though at this point, black is completely winning. Black hangs around in the center, and white would like to play this move, but can't. So proceeds to play knight to c3. Now clearly, this is where you gotta keep in mind that white wants to win time and space. So you need to prevent that move, pawn to e4. Black here goes, you know what would, would be really nice? Not the development of any of my other minor pieces. Oh, sorry, of my minor pieces, right? I wanna knight, knight, bishop, no, 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 no. At this point, I wanna play the worst possible move in the position. That's what black says. I wanna play the worst possible move that doesn't lose material and plays the move f6. F6 is not a good move at all, and now uh, immediately after white strikes in the center, white has the initiative once again. F6 doesn't make a single bit of sense, but that's why this game is so wonderful. So pawn takes e4, pawn takes e4, and now what are you doing with this bishop? Uh, you go here, you lose it. You go here, your bishop's just a, a target anyway, right? So uh, bishop back to c8, resetting up the board seven moves in. Now white actually, despite being a pawn down, has a massive lead in development and more space, and that doesn't that, that costs a pawn and, and more, so white can play h5, justifying all this, um, and that's exactly what white does. And now black plays g5. I actually like this move, but the problem with this move is you're never going to develop that side of the board. What white should do now is just continue to develop, and white does that with bishop 2e3. Black plays knight h6. I don't hate this move at all, because now you win control over g4, potentially, and can go after this bishop and, and other options. e5, no, 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 this is, this is no good. Uh, white needs to set up the full forces before you can deploy them to war. Uh, playing the move e5 just does not make any sense. It's like trying to uh, take on a, a full house with like, you know, two, like two people when you've got like 14 on the board. Doesn't make any sense, right? So e5. Now, I like that black ignores that. A lot of people just snap take. No, 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 bishop g4 attacking the queen. White plays knight to f3, and black responds with knight f5. This is beautiful stuff, like everything. You, you've coordinated your pieces beautifully. They've danced forward, bishop f2. So now, naturally, we need to kind of pause here and go e6, maybe get the piece out, finish your development, castle your king. No, actually, black uh, now plays a, a move that just loses on the spot, which seems kind of crazy. It's a, it's a trade. Black trades on f3. I can't stress enough how little this makes sense, because... Black has almost no development whatsoever, and you have two pieces exerting a little bit of pressure. So you trade them, and now you have one, two, three, four, five of your seven pawns on dark squares. So you should be trading your dark squared bishop. You trade your light squared bishop. Now this queen attacks this and this. It's really not that complicated how bad of a decision this is. And now black plays knight takes d4. Okay, I get why black did it. I get it. I get it. Bishop takes knight. I win a free pawn. You don't really win a free pawn, though, because... Um, first of all, b7 is hanging all the time. Second of all, after something like takes, takes, and like, I don't know, rook d1 or this. Yeah, you, you, first of all, you haven't won a free pawn. Second of all, you're going to lose your rook. 
Okay, Gotham, it's check. Yeah, and it's check. You could give me all the checks you want. At some point, you're gonna run out of them, and then you're gonna lose the rook. I don't even have to face the music. I think that's the saying. But okay, these folks are 800. So knight takes d4 for your pawn, and naturally, white isn't thinking aggression. White is thinking, oh no, I've got two pawns hanging. I have to play queen d3. And you know what the best part is after queen d3? White is still much better, even though they didn't find the refutation of the whole idea. Black here plays pawn takes e5. Now for a very brief moment, black has a three pawn advantage. Three pawn advantage. I guess it, black has always been a pawn up. So now black is two pawns up, not a pawn up, but two pawns up. Three pawns up. And yet white is much better. Why? Well, because you're 15 moves in the game and look what you've moved. Why did the chess gods bestow upon you a full set of pieces only for you to move like four of them? Hmm? So white plays knight e4. If I was playing with the white pieces here, I long castle. I just castle long, get my rook in the game. The bishop is coming now. The second rook is coming. We're going to win the game. But okay, knight e4, I like this move as well. g5 is under attack. So naturally, you have to defend it by putting your bishop in prison, which actually, which put, putting bishops in jail would actually be a good thing for society. But, you know, h6 is probably the way to go here. I don't really know why you have to lock in the bishop. But okay, I digress. Long castle. White is playing this game like an absolute grandmaster. Black, of course, sees an opportunity to get the bishop out of prison and plays g4 check. Okay, bishop to e3, offering a trade of bishops. Now we have bishop takes, queen takes. Okay. So somehow, black has uh, survived the worst, uh, but still has everything on the back rank. And of course, if you're going to choose a house for the king, would you rather choose the house that has the walls and the roof, or the house that has neither? Like... A front door that stands on a hinge and you can just walk right around it and there's no ceiling well naturally of course you got to choose the safer option that's going to take you a little bit of time so maybe you play something like queen d7 um yes white does pin your knight to your queen but you actually have enough reinforcements that losing it is not the worst thing in the world because you're up so many pawns you also have moves like this which pin the pawn to the king uh but black of course uh castles short so you have one hinge and uh one front door uh, but, uh, you know, queen g5 here is plus 10. The position is plus 10. Okay, king to h8, queen takes e5, check. King goes back, it's mate in 10. It's m10. Now, I'm not expecting white to find force mate in 10. I'm expecting for white to at least give a couple of more checks, and white does that. e6, bishop e6, and now rook, uh, knight takes e6, queen e6. King g7. Okay, it's now mate in four. Four moves it's mate, and if you don't see that, at least take the queen. At least take the queen. Well, white does see it. h6 check, look at that. That's it. I mean, at this point, black can probably resign, right? Black can probably resign, but then they wouldn't make it into a chess dot. I mean, a chess.com. Gotham Chess YouTube video. Although we are playing on chess.com, and there's a link in the description if you want to sign up for premium. Your boy's gonna get a little bit of a referral kickback. I'm just saying... Queen e5 check, king g8, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the conclusion of our game with queen to g7 checkmate. Oh, so, uh, 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 white finally went, oh, wait a minute, I missed a queen. I gotta go take the queen. Obviously, gotta go take the queen. Now, black could resign at this point, but black just plays, you know what, I'm just gonna play it out until mate. I'm a respectful individual, and I commend my opponent for taking all of my pieces but they still haven't found mate so i might as well play a couple of moves clearly they have a blind spot but now that they are right here they're obviously gonna go back to the same square because that's apparently what 800s do they check you three times on that square so you might as well check again all right i can't keep checking with the queen right so now i need i need the knight to come in for some reason uh now black has only one way to escape mate on g7 it's to run so the king goes for it King's going for it. Now, finally, white's like, oh, it's the only check I have. Otherwise, I would have lost my knight. Thankfully, white only saw that a couple moves later. So the king goes running. Now, white's like, oh, great, rookie one. Black can also uh, forget about losing this pawn and another queen on the board, and the king's gone running. Okay, queen e7 check. King to c6. Rookie, uh, queen e6 check. King c5. Queen d5 check. King b6. By the way, this whole time, it's mating three, two, one, four, whatever. Rookie six. Now, this is where black finally is forced into committing a pawn forward, which leads to another check. But now, there are no more checks. 
Make no mistake, this position is mate and six at at most. Mate and five, mate and six. Uh, it's mate in a couple of ways, but the easiest thing to do here, by the way, with white is to make sure no pawn becomes a queen and just go sack your pieces for the rest of these two. Just don't let black have the knight or the rook. Black can't possibly fight back if they only have pawns and as long as the pawns are stopped, right? So, but okay. We have queen c8, which doesn't really do much. Uh, not that black can do much of anything. So black plays king b6, knight d7 check, knight takes d7, and just completely forgets about the rook and takes the knight instead. It's still totally losing, but now black has a little bit of hope. So second black does. <laughs> There's the rook. That's a great move. Uh, that's not made. That would be nicer if it was made, but the king can go here. But still, white makes a little fort for the king. Never too late to hang mate or the uh, illusion of it. Now rook f1 check. King b2. And black has one thing going for it. That's it. They just got the pawn, so they're going to push it. Now white can win this again by teaming up the rook with the queen. Uh, by taking on h7, which is what they do in the game. And now g2. And the thing about g2 is you can no longer prevent this. You can't prevent it. So you have to stop the pawn from becoming a queen normally. But if you can't, you need to sacrifice one of these two pieces for it. And of course you're going to do the rook. But white does the queen. And I guess white thought, well, obviously this is simple. I'm going to lose my queen and promote another pawn. But now what? So now black, you're forced to play this, and it's lateral defense. You see, if white could put the rook behind the pawn to propel it forward, it would be winning. But they can't. And now black plays a5. Of course, a5, you got to play c4. So this is still winning for white. But it's very tricky. Essentially, black is paralyzed, and it's going to be difficult to move and not lose this pawn. And this king should run to help this pawn. In the meanwhile, these pawns might become a little bit loose, so you have to make sure that you're defended. But the king needs to go give some help. Okay, that's what needs to happen. So king to c5 is a clean loss of the b-pawn and maintains defense of this. Okay, uh, now white is two pawns up. But white is like, oh, active king in the endgame, king to c3. Now b5, all right, a3. B4 check, A, B, A, B, forcing the king out, Rook, H3. The, the problem is that looks great. It looks fantastic, but you cannot win it. If king to E4 and you take on B3, that, that's not going to work because H8 is queen. But white plays king C2. White's like, I don't want to lose the pawn. Oh my goodness. If I walk out, I'm going to lose my pawn. Check. King to D3. Check. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are, if you're focusing, you know how this game ends. Here, king to e4 played, and the king is finally making a run for it. Black at this point could probably call it a game. It's, it's game over. I mean, you realize you can't take this, so you say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to resign. No. You give one more check, and you let your opponent choose. There is a one, two, three, four, five, six options. There are six options for White's king to move. Five of them continue the game, and one of them does not. What are you, what, 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 what are you talking about, Levy? There's a 16.6% .6 chance that White screws this up. And in the game, king to d3 back was played, and the game ended in a draw by repetition. The move king to f5, king g6, would have at least won the game. King f3 would have prolonged the game. Any move would have prolonged the game. White played king d3, snatching a draw out of the jaws of victory. And that is why you never, ever, ever, ever resign, folks.